Okay, I'll uh, now share my screen and for the other people that will join later on, I'll let them in. So uh, let me share my screen. Okay, people are, people are still joining. A few more moments and then I'll start the presentation. Thank you for your patience for those that joined earlier. Okay, I think that uh, now we can start. Uh, first of all, I want to say uh, thank you for being here with us today on our first uh, virtual meetup organized under Vitola Macedonia Group. And our topic for today is functionality, so the custom monitoring and alerting tool. And I really hope that uh, you'll find it useful and interesting. So uh, that's the topic for today. Uh, Shortly, I'll explain what it's all about and why actually we created uh, this uh, group. I'm make, making small interruptions, sorry for that, because uh, people are joining and I need to admit them, uh, let them in. Uh, actually, this is the first meetup uh, news of group in the Balkans, in this uh, South and Eastern uh, Europe region. And the idea was uh, to extend the news of community in this part of the world. Uh, there are integration professionals and uh, people interested in use of SM integration platform. So we strongly believe that it's an excellent starting point, actually, to create the group and join the community here. Uh, the, this group, uh, as mentioned in the second point, is uh, created from the community uh, to the community. So there is no commercial interest from our side. And what I want to say actually, maybe the main point why we created uh, this group actually was the idea to have one central place where we can uh, meet, meet each other, uh, share our knowledge like uh, we are doing today, discuss the trendy topics and help each other when it is needed. Um, in the end, I will say everyone who wants to participate, uh, collaborate uh, and help, uh, is welcome to join this uh, group, not just from this region, but from all over the world. So uh, we will be pleased to collaborate and work together. Uh, next thing that we'll see today uh, is actually uh, the agenda for today. Is uh, firstly, uh, I'll have a short introduction. I'll shortly introduce myself. For those that uh, do not know me, there are people who already know me. Uh, and then we'll uh, discuss a bit about the history and how the idea was born to uh, create this kind of tool and the theoretical explanation about the possibilities and the key features. And the uh, second topic, actually, the second part of this presentation will be a demo presentation where we will go through the code. I will explain uh, how that is implemented and we will debug test it and I will show all the functionalities so you will be able to see them. And at the end, uh, we'll have a time slot uh, reserved for questions, uh, maybe remarks or suggestions from your side, how we can improve this. 
As I said, uh, firstly, I'll introduce myself for those that uh, do not know me, actually. My name is uh, Sasha Rechinovsky. I'm a senior technical consultant in IW Connect. Uh, I'm currently leading the Vitula Macedonia meetup group. And recently, I've been recognized as a news of mentor by the news of community. And uh, I'm, uh, uh, let's say, new news of enthusiast, integration enthusiast. And I have over six years of IT experience in design, development, and uh, implementation of the enterprise application integration using uh, mainly uh, new soft, uh, suite of products. But also, I have experience with Kipco suite of products, another integration platform. And I had an opportunity to work on uh, uh, a very uh, dynamic projects from uh, USA and Europe-based clients where I had a chance to show my abilities for designing, testing uh, the products by using advanced technologies mm -hmm. and the development as well. Uh, I'll kindly ask you to mute yourself. Okay, or I'll do that. Yeah, it's fine, okay. So also I want to mention that I'm a certified news of developer for both uh, versions, MU3 and MU4. And uh, currently I'm preparing the certification for the integration architect. So uh, shortly said, uh, that is uh, who I am. That is uh, my introduction, what I can say from myself. And I think it's enough for today. Um, um actually now i will start let's say we'll start with the first topic for today uh which is uh, history and the theoretical explanation of the two uh what we'll see here actually uh, we will uh, explain how the idea was born why actually we started uh, thinking about creating this kind of tool uh we will explain why we decided to invest uh, the time in the development of this kind of tool and at the end, actually, there are a few slides where we'll explain uh, the tool structure firstly. We will explain what we can achieve and what we are doing with this tool. And at the end, we'll uh, list the key functionalities of uh, this tool. So let's start and go to, to this uh, topic for today. Uh, First thing that I want to mention here is actually why uh, it's named uh, why investing time, why we invested uh, time and we think that uh, this kind of tool is uh, something that uh, we need to have. Actually, uh, nowadays uh, to be a leader in a market requires investment in the process automation, as I'm saying in this, uh, in this slide. And uh, it's crucial to remain competitive on the, on the market. Uh, I think that most of the companies uh, have uh, recognized the necessity of a stable uh, working environment, uh, imposing the need for 24 seven monitoring and fast reactions in case of issues. So I will say that uh, that has been our starting point to develop a tool for fast monitoring, alerting and auto restarting the use of application. And implementing this kind of tool uh, speeds up the process of uh, reaction and resolving uh, any possible issues that can pop up during the processing. So uh, that was actually uh, how we started and why we decided to invest uh, time in uh, this tool, this kind of tool. And next thing is how the idea was born. And it's a pretty interesting uh, story because I was involved from the start uh, in creating the tool, but actually how we started at uh, the beginning. Uh, initially, we had an issue with uh, the SFTP inbound connection, uh, and that was with the new version 3, in point studio 6. And the connection was uh, lost, apparently, and the files um, were not picked up uh, from the appropriate location specified on SFTP server. But uh, the pity part was that uh, uh, the news of applications, which were the news of application, uh, which was deployed on the Cloud Hub, uh, Endpoint Cloud Hub uh, platform on the on Runtime Manager, uh, it was not showing any error in the application uh, log. So it was difficult for us to uh, figure out uh, what is the, the, the problem there. 
and how we can solve it because uh, the files were not picked up uh, people were complaining but uh, uh, we are not seeing any issues in our application uh, so uh, we got an idea then of uh, creating uh, initially the flow within the same application uh, which will check the connection and notify us by email for the first phase let's say so we will know that the connection is down and we will need to react uh, that was fine uh, sending an email and notifying the team that we have a problem with the SFTP connection but uh, after that uh, we were doing the manual restart of, of the application and the thing was that uh, we need something uh, which will be uh, more automated uh, there were a couple of questions uh, within the team from the project manager as well uh, one of the questions um, was uh, what uh, if this uh, happen at uh, the weekend what we will do there is no one who can uh, uh, manually restart the application uh, for example what if we start checking multiple different type of connections placing different applications then it's uh, difficult for maintaining uh, no one wants to go uh, one by one uh, application and uh, redeploy it manually so that uh, that was the idea and, um, and then we started our investigation to check what are the options to automate whole process actually to have a one tool or external API where we will uh, put the, 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 the checking uh, implementation and mechanisms and uh, later on uh, automatically restart that and send an email notification. So that was the starting point and that was how the idea was born to start developing this kind of uh, tool. Um, next thing is uh, the tool structure. So the tool itself has uh, multiple different uh, functionalities. Uh, firstly, it uh, has functionality for monitoring all types of connections that are available in Microsoft, let's say. Uh, functionality for uh, mail alerting. That is actually done through the AnyPoint platform. We are uh, uh, using uh, uh, mail alerting from the uh, AnyPoint platform, Runtime Manager. Uh, functionality for auto restarting of the existing applications and functionality for automated uh, Jira ticket creation. So those are uh, four core functionalities of this tool. Uh, what it does, what uh, we are doing with this tool, uh, as I said previously, it has uh, a chance to check uh, all type of connections and we are checking if the connections, connection is live or not. Uh, second thing that we are doing is uh, creating an email alert with detailed information what is the cause of the issue so the appropriate team can uh, react fast and on time. Uh, in the meantime, we have a functionality for auto restarting the applications because that was something that fixed our problem, let's say, with the SFTP connection, and I, that's why we decided to add this uh, functionality. But uh, based on the project's need, project needs, uh, these functionalities can be included or excluded. So it depends how we we'll agree. And uh, last thing is uh, uh, creating Jira tickets with detailed information about the cause of the issue. So if we have a kind of, uh, let's say, support team who is monitoring the processes 24 seven, they, instead of uh, just uh, receiving an email, uh, we are able for tracking purposes also to create the Jira tickets. What are the key features actually of the tool? I'll list some of them that I have uh, on my mind and they are also aided uh, in this slide. Uh, the key uh, functionalities of the tool are uh, the ability to establish a very fast monitoring process. It su uh, supports connection setup check uh, in uh, use of application regardless of the, of the type that we have. Uh, supporting applications how to restart based on certain criteria that is defined in the, in the uh, application in the API, the tool itself, uh, supporting multiple monitoring processes at the same time, completely independent uh, of each other. Actually, we can, uh, for the today's demo, I choose 
two different connections if you need an FTP, but we can check uh, any other connections that uh, we want to check. Uh, we have automated functionality for geo tickets uh, creation, back creation as well. Uh, it's easily upgradable and you can easily maintain this uh, tool. And once everything is set up correctly and deployed on the Cloud Hub platform or uh, standalone, uh, there is no human interaction needed. We do not need to uh, make uh, any uh, checks or uh, manual restarts or stuff like that. Everything uh, is done by that tool. So basically that was the first part where I want to explain the history, how the idea was born, why we uh, decided to invest some time, what are the core functionalities of the, of the tool. Uh, next thing will be uh, the demo presentation. I will present the, the code actually itself. I will open the uh, endpoint studio. Uh, this version is uh, uh, MIL4 actually. We have also older version in uh, MIL3. But for, for the uh, presentation today, I choose uh, MIL4. I'll uh, stop the presentation and I'll open my endpoint studio. So uh, firstly, actually, uh, what we'll see uh, today, I've created four different applications created for the demo purposes today. We will debug uh, the code and explain the implementation in details. Uh, we'll test directly the application deployed uh, on the endpoint platform. I uh, will see uh, the alerts creation, we'll see the auto uh, restarting option, and we'll see that we'll have a Jira tickets creation after we'll simulate uh, an error. So uh, I'll stop uh, the presentation for a moment and I'll present my endpoint studio. I hope that everyone is able to see the endpoint studio. So I can start my demo presentation for today. As I've already uh, explained, uh, we have four different applications created. First two applications are actually dummy applications. Uh, normally, when we have a situation uh, where we want to, to, to check the uh, connection, we have the applications which are de deployed on the endpoint uh, cloud platform. And uh, there we have multiple different, uh, multiple different connections. So that is uh, something that we want to simulate. For today, as I said, I, uh, I have a DB connection check and FTP connection check that will be uh, presented. And that's why I've named uh, these uh, applications as IWC DB test API and IWC FTP test API. Uh, once we will simulate an error, both applications actually will simulate the connection issue, DB connection issue and FTP connection issue. And we'll see that both applications on the any point platform will be restarted. I'll show you that later. Uh, third application is the application which is, uh, which is deployed in the, uh, on the Cloud Hub. And uh, I will show you how it's sending a sample request. I will use a Postman tool for that. Uh, we'll uh, see in a couple of minutes that the applications are checked. I've said they are wrong uh, uh, connection settings and uh, it will fail. So we will see that uh, alert will be cre created. We'll receive an uh, email, sorry. <clears throat> After that, uh, we'll uh, see the Jira tickets created and uh, both applications will be restarted. Uh, the last application is uh, that I've created for uh, presenting in the Anypoint Studio is named uh, IWC Monitoring Alerting Tool uh, V1. So in this application, actually, we have uh, uh, five different uh, XML files created. Uh, we have separated functionalities in different uh, XML files uh, because uh, let's say in a future, uh, if we want to reuse it, uh, if we have multiple checks, uh, we do not want to multiply the same code. That's the reason why we separated uh, these uh, uh, functionalities in different uh, XML files. 
uh, and also it's uh, more clear when uh, we want to explain the whole implementation. Uh, we have uh, alerts creator XML file, uh, which is used for creating alerts, creating uh, cloud hub notification. Uh, uh, apps restarter, it's used for auto restarting the applications once we have uh, an issue with the connection. I will show you later on in the code how we are doing that. We have global XML, there are stored all the uh, global configurations that uh, we are using. And uh, we have the implementation, which is the main part, part IWC uh, MAT implementation file. Sorry. And we have the Jira ticket creator XML. Uh, there we have the implementation for creating the Jira tickets and adding the attachments. I'll, I'll explain that part as well because it's separate functionality. So uh, also we have, uh, let's say we are following a standard procedure. We created uh, different uh, configuration files for different environments. Since I'm using the uh, test uh, account for, uh, present, for today's presentation, I have a configuration file for one general configuration file for the design environment and for the sandbox environment. And we have uh, a DVL files created uh in order to have a uh, more clear code when you open and look into it and we have uh, one file which is used for uh testing the connection uh, we are placing that within the structure of the application so let me now uh, i'll start firstly with uh, the main part the implementation part of uh of the tool of this api uh that is the uh, IWC MAT implementation XML file. What we have here, we have the, for the today's demo, we have three different, uh, three different uh, flows here, but uh, actually it can be extended as we said, it's depend, uh, it depends how many connections we want to check and uh, what type of connection we want to check. Uh, what we are doing here, we have uh, inbound connector on your updated file. In this case, we have a standard uh, uh, configuration setup here. What is important actually, in the directory part, we have we have app home and file path, which are uh, reference from the variables and it's absolute path. So it's uh, really important because uh, once we started developing this part, if you put uh, the uh, directly hard coded uh, uh, location where the file is placed, or once uh, we uh, create a zip file or jar file, uh, since the uh, folder structure is changed, uh, the application actually will not work properly. The file won't be picked up because it is not putting in at the right uh, location. So that is important thing here. We have frequency set for the today's demo five uh, minutes. It's a fixed frequency. We can also use a, a cron expression. It depends what we want to achieve. And the last part, which is important, is auto delete to be set to false. Otherwise, uh, well, you will check the connection only once. You will not have a file for the second check. Next thing is the logger. Uh, what we are doing with the logger, we just want to lock the time when uh, the monitoring started actually. And we are using the now function, but um, I believe that most of you know that uh, the, uh, uh, when we are deploying the application on the Cloud Hub platform, uh, servers are deployed on AWS actually, and uh, not always the time corresponding with the time where we are located. In that case, we need to make an implementation and add also the time zone where we are located if we want to see the correct time. Otherwise, we will set, see the time with the differences. Next part is in order to check both connections. Uh, Simultaneously, we are using the scatter router, and we have flow references to the uh, to the to the uh, implementation flows. First, uh, first flow is actually uh, IVC uh, monitor FTP flow. Here we will check the FTP connection, and second flow is uh, IWC monitor DB flow. 
Uh, sorry for switching uh, to the right, uh, but uh, I'm looking in the second screen for this uh, demo presentation in the Anypoint Studio, and that's the reason maybe uh, why I'm not looking straight uh, to, to the camera on the first screen. So uh, for that purpose, actually, in order to firstly show you that uh, this will work, I have uh, already started locally on my side uh, from Zilla server and also a SQL, uh, SQL server. Uh, and they are, they are up and running. Once I run the application, initially there will be no issue. Later on, I'll uh, set a wrong credential, for example, wrong password, and you will, uh, during the debug, we will see that uh, it will fail. What we are doing uh, in this flow, so actually I will uh, go through the first flow. The second flow uh, is completely the same, just the connection is different. So no need to go through all these uh, setups and uh, that stuff. Uh, what we are doing, uh, actually, once the file is picked up, we are logging the prime for monitoring. And uh, using the scatter gather, we are calling uh, simultaneously two flows. There can be uh, many more if we want to check the other uh, connections. We have a variable uh, set where we are saving the initial payload. Why we are doing that? Uh, because we do not want immediately to, to raise an error, okay, Jira ticket, uh, and restart the applications. But we've created a, a custom uh, retry logic, and we are retrying for three times actually here. What we are doing, uh, we are getting the, the, the uh, payload that is coming from the file. And we are setting the variable name retries. And each time when you check this, uh, the variable will be incremented. Once. So uh, once the, the variable is equal to three, then we will uh, proceed. And in that case, we'll uh, raise an error. Actually, we will uh, uh, create uh, the Jira ticket, uh, alert notification, and we will start the application. So uh, as I said, just to show you this part here. Uh, how it's configured, uh, it's simple uh, variable, it's named retries and we are setting the default value as zero and we are incrementing for, for one each time when this happens. So first time when we'll uh, have a problem with the FTP connection it will be set to one, second time to two, and third time to three. And for the fourth time, actually, uh, we will create uh, the Jira tickets. Here we are setting the initial payload from the variable. We are uh, using one logger in uh, this part, and we are uh, logging the number of uh, retries, actually. In order, uh, when we will see the application logs, we will uh, be able to see how many times it uh, retries. And uh, we are calling this um, uh, flow here again. And that's how we are achieving the, the uh, retry logic. After the third time, as I said, uh, we are setting the uh, connectivity error variable. Uh, the idea for this is uh, to set up, let's say, to put a kind of uh, hard-coded value, because later on, we are using uh, custom Cloud Hub notification. And for that purpose, uh, we need uh, this uh, kind of uh, content in order to appropriately create the, the notification and the error that will be, uh, the email that will be sent, sorry. Uh, in the next variable, we are setting uh, the application name. As I said, normally, uh, we are checking the connections which are uh, placed under the different applications. And that's why I've created these applications uh, too. So in this case, uh, uh, the value in this variable is IWC FTP test API. And it has uh, uh, something else added there, which is stating the version and the, the environment, we will see later on. I will open the uh, Cloud Hub platform. Uh, once that is done, we are doing these things here because we are using later on in uh, these uh, flows for, uh, let's say, Jira ticket creation, Allens creation, and uh, absolute starter. Even this is for, uh, let's say, testing purposes and showing the core functionalities of this tool. We've tried to uh, 
let's say not uh, hard code uh, the thing, but uh, most of them are, uh, are uh, reusable. Uh, so now uh, I will show you the uh, Jira ticket uh, creator flow. That's the, the order of the, how we are calling the flows. And I will uh, follow this order actually. If you see in the application structure, we have different uh, order, but that uh, depends on the name of the flows. That's why. Uh, here I've uh, added firstly to be created the Jira ticket. And we will go to, to this flow. Uh, what we are doing here, actually, in uh, this flow, uh, we, we have a choice router uh, and based on the value in the connectivity uh, error variable, we are uh, making uh, right differentiation of where we'll need to route uh, the, the message in the first route or in the second. First route is dedicated to the FTP connection and second one is dedicated to the DB connection. If we have something else, we are logging a message that uh, it's an uh, unidentified error message. We, uh, it's not a DB connection or FTP connection. So what we are doing here, this was, uh, let's say, uh, done with, uh, as a cross-practice collaboration within our company. Thanks, uh, big thanks to the business support practice. Uh, they are running, the, uh, they are working with the uh, Jira software and they helped us a lot uh, with that part actually. Uh, thanks for that. Uh, they provided to us uh, structure, JSON structure of the message and what should be added there uh, in order to be able to create a, a ticket in case of uh, an issue. So I will not go through the whole message and how that is implemented, but uh, actually that is a simple request that we are doing, calling the uh, API, which was uh, uh, shared with us, the information about the API were, were provided by the business support uh, team from our side. Uh, we are calling that API and the interesting thing here, what I want to uh, tell you is that um, after the, the thing is that uh, once we created the ticket uh, with the, within the same call, we are not able to uh, add the attachment here. That's why actually what we are doing, this is an update to the uh, already created uh, ticket. And that's why we are getting the response. We are logging the response here after we, uh, we uh, create a ticket. And in that response, we have the ID of the ticket, which is created. We are using later on that ID and we are adding as uh, an attachment the uh, detail uh, uh, description of the error. Here we can add whatever we want. It's up to us to decide what we will put in that, uh, in that uh, attachment. So uh, also important part here, we spent some time actually when we were uh, configuring these things. Uh, we were trying initially to make it in one call. Uh, an interesting thing is that uh, the output should be multi-part uh, form data if you want to add an attachment to the GMAT ticket. Uh, later on, we are making uh, completely the same call. Additionally, we are sending the uh, ID. Uh, for the ticket that we want to update with the with an attachment, and at the end we are loading the response, which is retrieved back. Uh, completely the same uh, is uh, copied, copied for the uh, database connection. Uh, just the content of the message uh, is different. Actually, we are not uh, saying in the description that we are checking the DB connection or that the DB connection is done. Uh, sorry, the FTP connection is done, but it's stated uh, clearly that it's a DB connection. And uh, even if we have a different type of connection here, we can reuse this uh, part of the code. So it's uh, easily reusable. We just need to add another branch, uh, one more check, and uh, we can uh, check a different type of connection. But that also should be implemented uh, here as well in the main implementation part. So next uh, part is uh, alerts creator. For this thing here, actually, uh, it's a very simple, uh, very simple uh, implementation flow. 
what we are doing here, we are just uh, for logging purposes, uh, we are adding a message that uh, we want to log before sending Cloud Hub notification. Then we have Cloud Hub uh, notifi uh, alert notification. Uh, this is used for creating an alert directly on the Endpoint Cloud Hub platform. And uh, after it, we are uh, loading uh, the message that the uh, Cloud Hub notification was sent successfully. And that's it. And the last part is uh, auto restarting uh, of the application. There is also a very simple flow, but uh, during the implementation also we have, uh, let's say, no difficulties, but uh, uh, some obstacles the, during the setup of the connection correctly, because uh, we find uh, several different articles to, to uh, how it should be properly set up. And at the end, uh, uh, we managed to, to do that. Uh, it's, um, Looking from this perspective today, it's um, it's not uh, very complex, but uh, when we started, when we were on the start, uh, we, we need to complete several different things in order to make it uh, up and running. So here actually we have uh, uh, HTTP call, uh, the request that is sent is a status and it's a JSON request that should be sent. We are sending status restart. Uh, we have an implementation uh, how it should be set up. Uh, important part uh, here is that uh, we'll need to send uh, the appropriate environment ID uh, in order to make it uh, up and running. Otherwise, uh, it, uh, it will not work, actually. Uh, so uh, after uh, this, we are logging. Uh, the last step is that uh, we will say that uh, the application is successfully restarted. So uh, basically, there is uh, this all that I want to uh, explain going through the code, through the configurations and, and that stuff. Uh, all the properties are aided uh, in this case in the uh, configuration sample because I'm deploying the application there, not in the design environment. And some of them which are uh, general, not depend of the, uh, independent of the uh, environment, they are aided in this uh, config uh, YAML file. So uh, what I'll do right now in order to show you that uh, this is, uh, this working file, I'll uh, uh, run the application and we'll see that uh, the application, the connections are checked and they are up and running. After that, in order to show you that uh, once we uh, put uh, wrong credentials, the connections will be down, we'll simulate that the connection is down that way. Uh, we'll see that uh, it will fail, it will retry for three times, and later on uh, will be created a JIRA ticket, email alert, and the applications will be restarted on the endpoint platform. I'll open endpoint platform as well to show you that. So let me firstly run the application. And I hope that I didn't change before the demo entry, so it will, it will properly work. <coughs> We'll wait for a few moments. Normally, it will start very fast. It is taking more time than I expected, but yeah, it started. So what we can see here that the first logger is executed, this one, the monitoring started at exactly this time. 
uh, second one is uh, this one after the FTP connection is checked and is saying that the file check connection test file.txt is successfully stored on FTP at this time. And the last one will be the one after the database connection check. Uh, it will say that uh, the DB uh, check was successfully completed at uh, exactly this time. So uh, this is in the happy pass scenario when all the connections are up and running and everything is working fine. In that case, we do not need to uh, take any actions. But uh, let's imagine that uh, we have a problem with uh, some of the connections. For that purpose, I will uh, put the wrong uh, connection settings here, wrong credentials. I will save this part and I will run this in the, in the debug mode. So uh, we will go through, through the code. We will see that uh, both. Uh, both flows will uh, will fail. We will retry for three times, and later on, all these flows will be executed. And I will show you the uh, the tickets that will be created, email alerts that uh, we will receive, and that the applications will be restarted. So well, let's again wait a bit for application to start. Yeah, so as we can see, uh, the flow is executed and we have an issue with the uh, database. It's saying that can get connection for the URL uh, login failed. And uh, we'll see a similar message, but related to the FTP connection. So I will not go to all of them. I just want to show you that uh, it is retrying form multiple times and only after uh, three times of retrying it will uh, fail and create the alerts and you'll see all those workers executed which I've previously shown to you. Yeah. So uh, as I said all those logins are successfully executed. So normally after this, let me go a bit up. It's uh, difficult for, uh, you see it's uh, tried three times and after that it uh, failed. So I'll go through to the end. And uh, let me now open the uh, uh, Cloud Hub platform. Let me click the login. My session expired. Yeah, as we can see, the DB, uh, the DB application is restarted. Uh, let me see if we received an email for that. Yeah. As well, we received uh, an email notification and that uh, looked like this, that we have an issue with the connection. And at the end, if we open the JIRA board, we'll, the, the, the JIRA ticket actually is created. Sorry, I'm trying a little too fast. Uh, JIRA ticket is uh, created. Uh, the subject of the JIRA ticket uh, has the name of the environment. Uh, it is saying that the DB connection is down. We have who is uh, reported, to who is assigned, uh, uh, date, all that stuff. Uh, and in the description that we are writing, we are saying that the DB connection, the sandbox environment is down. The application uh, where we have set this application, we are simulating this one is IWC DB test API. So please refer to the attachment for more details and we can see that the attachment is created as well. So in this attachment, as I said, uh, I'm adding the detailed description, but we can add uh, many more things we can uh, place uh, there. So this is showing that it is working uh, properly. And as I said, uh, for testing purposes as well, 
I've created another application to show you even when the application is deployed on the Cloud Hub platform, it will work properly. Uh, let me check what is happening in the studio because uh, normally this uh, second one should be executed, but maybe I didn't uh, save the changes uh, for the wrong login for FTP, and that's why I've seen only the error for the, the DB. But uh, in order not to spend time again on it, uh, if I put a wrong connection setting for FTP, the connection will be down and exactly the same uh, interface will be executed. So we'll see uh, one more uh, mail. We'll see that uh, with the application, which is already deployed on Cloud Hub platform. So for that purpose, as I said during the uh, uh, presentation, I will use the Postman. Uh, well, what I have made there, instead of using the, the file uh, uh, within the application, I've uh, created uh, an API and exposed one operation. The operation is named invoke, and I'm using a simple uh, JSON message to trigger uh, the, the checks. And this application is already deployed on the Cloud Cloud platform with the wrong credentials in order to simulate that we have we will have issue with the connection. So I'll. Uh, send this uh, request. It will take some time because uh, retries are set there as well. So uh, after three retries, uh, after three retries, we'll see that uh, the uh, applications, both applications will be restarted. I hope that both applications will be restarted. And uh, uh, you see, I retries first time. And uh, uh, that we will receive again the mail alert, uh, Jira ticket, uh, which is the standard procedure that I've already explained. But let's wait for a couple more moments uh, for the, because I've said, uh, uh, I don't know if I mentioned that during this is uh, running. Let me quickly show you that part. Yeah, this is running a bit slow, as I said. Actually, I set the, the, the wrong connection for FTP. And if I continue with the debugging, it will create uh, the, it will uh, fail and it will create our uh, Jira ticket and restart the application, but I will stop this one here. What I want to explain you, uh, we have a, a, a wait uh, a mechanism added here and we are waiting for five seconds. That, seconds, that, why, that is why uh, it uh, needs some time before the applications got uh, restarted. So let me quickly change what is uh, happening. Yeah. So both applications are restarted. Normally, I'll need to have two more messages. This one, uh, where we are receiving a notification about the DB error and, and this one for the FTP error. The previous one was before five minutes. That was uh, during the... Uh, Debugging locally, and here I open this one. Let me restart it. Yeah, two new uh, Jira tickets were created. One related to the DB connection issue, and the other one for the FT connection. So, uh, what I can say actually, I uh, that is all that I have uh, to say. Uh, for presenting the monitoring and alerting tool. Uh, at the end, I have uh, just one more slide actually. Uh, what is uh, next after this uh, meetup? Uh, I'll kind of ask you to uh, populate one survey and suggest some new topics for the upcoming events. And everyone who wants to become a member of the Bitola Macedonia meetup group can do that following uh, this link. This, uh, Presentation will be shared with all of you. And if you have questions or suggestions for improvement uh, related to the topic that uh, we are discussing right now, you can contact me directly privately. And for now, actually, we really have six more minutes, but if you want, we can stay, uh, let's say, after 6 p.m. for five to 10 more minutes so you can uh, ask your question. So everyone who is uh, interested, who, who wants to, to 
post some questions, feel free to, to do that. You can unmute yourself and ask a question if something you find something interesting. Okay, I'll wait for a few moments. If uh, there are no questions, I will close this uh, meetup, this session. And as I said, you have another uh, another uh, option. I think that we have something in the chat. Let me check it from. Okay, uh, Krishna is saying thank you, Sasha, for the session, but uh, no question. So, if there are no questions, uh, I will close this session. I will say thank, thank you for all of you that participated today and attended the meetup. Uh, I can say that uh, we'll have uh, many other meetups in the future and we'll discuss uh, some trendy topics uh, that are coming. Thank you once again for, for joining and uh, have a nice rest of the day. Thank you. Yeah. She also had a question like, uh, how, how have you implemented the timer logic with uh, transfer methods? Yeah, uh, let me open the studio and I will show you that. And that is something uh, which is uh, commonly used actually. Uh, let me open it. Uh, we are importing the uh, data with uh, runtime and what we are saying actually to the payload that is coming, to the incoming payload message. In this case, it's a, 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 a content of the file that we are using in this uh, demo presentation. And we are saying wait for uh, 5,000 milliseconds. This value is always in milliseconds. Okay, thanks, Shashwat. Uh, I just wanted to see the logic which you have implemented. Yeah, yeah I didn't uh, show that, but, sorry, sorry for that. Yeah, yeah thanks. Yeah, welcome. Anyone else? We have for three more minutes, maybe, some, some other question. Okay, in that case, I'll, uh, I'll post this uh, call. And once again, I'll say thank you for, for joining because this was our uh, first meetup and we really appreciate uh, you coming. Thank you, Sasha. Bye. We have another message which is saying thank you, Sasha. This was interesting and informative.